Okay, you should have taken the notes already on concentration and solubility. Um, this would have been a demo and possibly even a lab we would have done in class. So I just want to go over some examples uh, with you on um, what the words mean. So the first one I'm going to do is um, I have two beakers here, each one with 200 milliliters of water. Okay, and I've got five grams of aspirin and five grams of salt. Um, I had to use stuff that I had at home. Um, we would have used, you know, our copper sulfate and all that, but um, this is stuff I had lying around the house. So we're going to put the aspirin and the salt, five grams of each, into 200 milliliters of water and see how well each one of them dissolves. Okay, so I'm just going to take um, the salt, pour it in there, and the aspirin. I'm going to pour in there, and um, all this is being done on a, on a kitchen scale. So um, we're going to give that a little, a little stir. Oh, and the aspirin I got from, um, I have this for a spice grinder, so I got the aspirin by just gr grinding some up. So I'm going to go ahead and stir. This is the aspirin. And make sure to get some of the stuff off the sides. We're going to try to dissolve that. And I'm going to clean off my, my spoon, let that sit for a little bit, and then I'll go ahead and do the salt as well. Give that a little stir. And we're going to put that off to the side for a little bit. Um, what I also want to go over is um, how pressure can affect solubility. So in the notes, you should have written down that uh, pressure can increase the solubility of gases. And an example of that is something you probably already know. What you have to remember, though, is that water is polar and carbon dioxide is nonpolar. Um, and that was from our covalent bonding unit. And it should be in your uh, covalent bonding, your interactive notebook assignment. So this is some soda water that I had left out last night. Um, and you can see it's flat, obviously. Right? You leave soda out and it becomes flat. Okay, this is a soda water that I just opened up, and you can see it's still nice and bubbly, right? So water is polar, carbon dioxide is nonpolar. Polar and nonpolar do not like to mix, right? Like dissolves like, which is in your, um, which is in your notes from this unit. So, what is causing the carbon dioxide? to dissolve in the water here, but not here? And the answer is that the soda in the can has been pressurized. They, they increase the pressure, which uh, makes it dissolve better in, uh, in the water. But of course, eventually you open the can, you release the pressure, and you can see the nonpolar carbon dioxide is coming right out of the water. And again, if you leave it long enough, it'll, it'll look like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at our um, salt and aspirin mixtures over here. So I'm going to go ahead and give each one of them another little stir and let it settle for a little bit. Okay, so clean off my spoon. Okay, so here is my salt, and that is uh, why I used the black paper on the scale so you could see. Uh, the salt settling at the bottom. Okay, so if I was to leave this for a little while longer, um, it would probably all dissolve, but in the interest of time, uh, we're not going to do that. But if you look at the difference between that and the aspirin, uh, the aspirin has, hasn't dissolved much. Um, and I could keep on stirring that, but um, it's not going to dissolve too much more than that. And if you were here, um, you could see there's a big uh, aspirin down at the bottom of the beaker. So what we would say then is that the aspirin is less soluble in water than the salt is. Okay, so here's my two. Here's the salt. Here's the aspirin. And... Um, you could say it the other way too that the salt is more soluble in water than the baking or the aspirin is. Um, but there is another way 
that you could get these to dissolve even more and that would be to heat them up. Uh, you can think about it as hot tea will dissolve more sugar than cold tea. I don't know if you've ever seen, um, you know, you're having iced tea and you try to stir sugar into it and uh, the, sh the sugar is settling at the bottom. doesn't matter how much you stir it, uh, it'll continue to settle at the bottom because that has become saturated. And the, the idea behind saturated and unsaturated solutions is what the uh, FET is going to be on um, that you'll get on Wednesday. Okay, so less soluble, more soluble, and a way of getting nonpolar molecules to dissolve in water is to increase the pressure if we're talking about gases. So um, I hope that uh, cleared up some of the stuff that was on the notes. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me um, and take care.